CBC Electronics. Today's video, we are going to discuss some questions from the antenna session. So, the antenna area is a, is a very important area and a lot of questions has been asked from this area. In uh, any of the competitive examination that can be GATE or uh, ISRO technical assistant examination or the upcoming uh, different examinations, this area is very important. So, uh, there are different types of antennas and there are different terms you should know about the antenna area. So, in this video, we will be covering some of those questions from the antenna session. So, starting off with very uh, simple questions, let us see what is the first question. A radio station has an EIRP. EIRP means effective isotropic radiated power of 25 kilowatts and a transmit power PT. That is transmit power of 1.73 kilowatts. What is the gain of the antenna? Okay, so here uh, the uh, terms given are EIRP and PT. It is transmitted power. So the relation between EIRP and we need to find the gain. So EIRP is equal to the relation between EIRP and gain is GT, EIRP is equal to GT into PT, where GT is the transmitter antenna gain and PT is the transmitted power. So, here we have EIRP, we have PT. So, it's simple, right? In order to find GT, EIRP by PT, right? So, what is EIRP? It is 25 kilowatts by 1.73 kilowatts, right? This is the equation or this is the uh, formula. So, the answer will be 14.45 is the gain of the antenna. So, this doesn't have any units. The gain is or the gain of the antenna is 14.45 is your answer. Next move on to the next question. A transmitter feeds a half wave dipole antenna with 100 watts of power. Calculate EIRP. So, here uh, the transmitter power is also being given. And we need to find EIRP, but we don't have, uh, we have not given the gain of the antenna. But uh, you should know that for a dipole antenna, the gain is, is, a, is a constant value. It is 1.64 is the gain for a dipole antenna. Okay. So now you have gain. Now you have power. You should simply find the EIRP by equation. EIRP is equal to PT into GT, where PT is 100. Watts. So, 100 into 1.64. So, the EIRP will be 1. 6, uh, sorry, 164 watts is your EIRP. Okay. So, the correct answer or the answer for EIRP here is 164 watts is your answer. The next question is this. What is the length of dipole antenna for AM 1100 kilohertz? That is AM modulation of uh, frequency 1000. Uh, 100 kilohertz. Okay, so we need to find the length of antenna. So, uh, so uh, while we were studying the basics of modulation in our college, uh, we have been uh, we have been given this concept that why are we going for modulation is because actually our aim is to reduce the height or the length of antennas. Okay, so we need to actually reduce the size of antennas, and for that purpose, purpose. We are actually going for modulation and we are using high frequency waves. That is carrier waves we are using. Okay. So, here the question is, we have been given the frequency of AM. Amplitude modulation we have been given. And we need to find the length of the antenna. Okay. So, how to find this? It has been given that it is a dipole antenna. So, for a dipole antenna, the length taken is lambda by 2. Okay. So, lambda by 2 is the length of the dipole antenna and uh, but we have been not given what is the value of lambda, right? So, how to find the value of lambda? We know that lambda is equal to C by F is the equation, okay? Lambda is equal to C by F. We know that C is the speed of light. So, it is 3 into 10 raised to 8 by F is 1100 into 10 raised to 3, right? If you solve, it, uh, solve this, you will get the value as 272.7 meter, right? So, the lambda value we have obtained as 272.7. Now, we need to find the value of length of the antenna with this lambda by 2 and it is 272.7 by 2 which is 136.5 approximately is the value of the 
length of your dipole antenna. I hope the concept is clear. So, we are using the frequency of uh, AM modulation wave or AM to find the length of your antenna being used for that purpose. Okay, so here, how will you calculate it? We are using a dipole antenna. So, the length is L is equal to uh, lambda by 2. First, you need to find the lambda. Then, you have to find lambda by 2. Okay, so th that uh, will be your answer for length of your antenna. A cell phone transmits at a power level of 500 milliwatt. Okay, so the power level of transmission or PT is given as 500 milliwatts with an antenna gain of 2.0 dB. So the dB value of gain is given. The cell tower has an antenna gain of 8.0 dB. So there is a tower and in which there is an antenna mounted and there that antenna's gain is 8 uh, dB and is at a distance of 5 miles away. So the distance between this uh, cell phone and the tower. So we are actually talking about a tower and the cell phone. Okay, so this cell phone is having an antenna and the tower is also having an antenna. The distance between these two is given as 5 miles. So the value or the distance is given in miles. Okay, now uh, the transmitted power PT is 500 milliwatt. Gain of the antenna in cell phone is, this is the cell phone. Cell phone is 2 dB and here it is 8 dB gain. Okay. When the cell is transmitting at 700 megahertz, so the frequency F is equal to 700 megahertz, uh, will the signal reach the tower and will it have the sufficient power to close the link? Now, what is closing the link? To communicate. Okay, so uh, closing link to communicate means will the, uh, actually the meaning is that will this, uh, the, the signal sent from the mobile phone or the cell phone will be able to reach the link with sufficient power so that it should be able to communicate through the path. That is called closing the link. Okay. Now in the bracket it is being given. 1 mile is equal to 1.609 kilometer. So we need to actually convert. And minus 105 uh, dBm is a minimum power needed to close the link. That is if this much minimum power is, uh, is being transmitted or if it is received at the receiver side. We actually have the transmitted power. Okay, so the receiver power, if it is minimum this much, then the mobile phone or the cell phone will be able to communicate. So what we need to find, we need to close the link. Or for that, we need to find the received power. What is the equation for received power? PR is equal to PT into GT into GR into uh, D, uh, sorry, lambda by 4 pi b the whole square, right? So, this is the equation for finding the received power. Now, in this uh, question, all the values are being given, but uh, the uh, the measurement or some values are being given in dB, some in milliwatt, distance is given in miles. So, actually, we need to convert these units. So, for that, for that first we will be, uh, first we will write all the values in a standard unit. Let us talk about the, uh, the gains. Okay, so the gains are, PT is equal to, sorry, gains is not PT, it is GT. GT is equal to 2 dB. So, it is a dB value, right? So, uh, we have been given the gain GT in dB. So, 10 log 10 GT is being given. So, we need to find the value of GT from this. So, we will take the anti-logarithm of 2 by 10, right? So, we have been given the value 10 log 10 gt is equal to 2, right? So, for taking gt, first we will divide 2 by 10. So, we will get 0 0.2, right? 0 0.2 we will get. So, in order to find gt, it is 10 raised to 0 0.2, okay? I hope the concept is clear. Okay, so this is just taking off reverse of dB. We know that in order to find dB, we have to take 10 log 10. So, take the anti-logarithm after dividing 2 by 10. Simple. So, the value of GT, if you take the anti-logarithm, that is convert dB to ratio, you will get 1.58 is a gain GT and GR is actually 10 raised to 0 0.8, that is 6.31.
okay so you will get gts 1.58 and gr as 6.31 also uh, the value of pt is been given right transmitted power and it is given in milliwatts we need to convert it to watt so pt is equal to 0.5 watt so we have now pt uh, pt gt and gr now we need lambda then we need d the d value distance is given in miles we need to convert that miles to meters okay i'll remove this first i hope this diagram is clear to you first we are going to convert the value uh miles that is distance d is equal to 5 miles right so distance is 5 miles 5 into 1.609 kilometers then into 1000 in order to convert that to meter okay so what will you get to solve it you will get the value of 8045 is the distance in meters right so we have the distance value also now what we need to find now we need to find the value of uh, lambda right only lambda is left all the other terms we have obtained so lambda is equal to how will you get it lambda is equal to c by f right c by f is the lambda value and uh, what is c it is 3 into 10 raised to 8 and what is the value of f if it is 700 megahertz so 700 into 10 raised to mega means 6 right so if you solve it i'll remove this and i'll write it here pt is equal to 0 0.5 watts okay so if you solve it you will get the value as 0 0.429 is the value of 429 meters is the value of your lambda so now i have all the values of all the terms so I am going to substitute that in the equation for received power and I am going to find the received power. Okay, so I am going to remove this question anyway. Uh, I only need this much because I have to check whether the received power dBm value is uh, greater than this. Okay, so I will remove the rest of the question. So I am going to now find the PR. So PR is equal to PT, I will write the general equation, PT, GT, GR into lambda, by 4 pi d the whole square right so what is pt it is 0 0.5 into gt is 1.58 into grs 6.31 into lambda is 0 0.429 by 4 into pi into d is 8045 8045 the whole square right so this is your pr equation if you solve all this received power uh, maths you will get uh, 8.89 into 10 raised to minus 11 watt okay so this is the power now we need to find the power in db value in order to compare with this okay so for that we will find the power in db value and how to calculate the power in db pr dbm that is received power in dbm is equal to 10 log 10 the received power in watt by 10 raised to minus 3. So, we will get the dBm value. So, you, here you have to substitute PR as 8.89 into 10 raised to minus 11. Right. So, you will get the value as 70.47. It is a negative value. Minus 70.47 dBm is the received power in dBm value. So, here the value of received power is minus 105 dBm. Right. So, uh, the received power uh, at the tower side from the mobile phone uh, is greater than the minimum power required to close the link or in order to have a communication. The minimum power required is 105, minus 105. The received power is minus 70. So which one is greater? This one is greater. So this mobile will actually close the link and the communication will happen. Next question is this. A horn antenna with lower side lobe has Half power beam width. HPBW is half power beam width. Of 22 degree and 23 degree in E plane and H plane. Uh, H uh, principal planes. What is the directivity uh, in DB of horn antenna? So we have to find the directivity. And the equation for fi uh, finding the directivity in terms of degree equation is 4, 5, 4, 1, 2, 5, 3 by 
theta in h plane in degree in into theta in e plane in degree so this is the equation this, this is the degree equation for finding the directivity okay 4 1 2 5 3 by uh, the uh, angle in that is the beam width in uh, half power beam width in e plane and half power beam width in h plane in degrees so both the values are given in degree so directly we get substitute the value and find the substitute uh, the uh, value in the equation and find the result okay 4 1 2 5 3 by 22 into 23 right so the equation uh, so this is the uh, equation and while finding this you will get the value as 81.53 is the directivity of this antenna so this is the equation please note this down this is the equation for finding the directivity of uh, of antenna in order to uh, find the directivity if the half power beam width in e plane and h plane is being given in degrees this is the equation okay so the correct answer here is 81.53 is the directivity of the antenna the next question is this consider dipole of length l equal to 3 so that is a dipole antenna of length l equal to 3 uh, determine electrical length of this dipole at 90 megahertz and 9 gigahertz state whether antenna electrically large or small so in order to find this uh, electrical length we actually first find the uh, wavelength lambda is equal to c by f so here f has been uh, changing from 90 megahertz that is there are two values 90 megahertz and 9 gigahertz so first we will find lambda 1 is equal to 3 into 10 raised to 8 by for 90 megahertz so 90 into 10 raised to 6 so if you find this value you will get it as 33.33 uh, uh, meter so this is the value of lambda 1 for 90 megahertz so here as compared to l is equal to 3 the lambda value is 33.33 so it is electrically large okay next we will find lambda 2 for 9 gigahertz so it is uh, 3 into 10 raised to 8 by 9 into 10 raised to 9 and if you find it, you will get it as 0 0.033 meter. So, as compared to L, it is electrically small. Okay. So, here, in order to find electrically large or small, we first find the, that is, we have to find the wavelength. Okay. So, lambda 1 is electrically large and lambda 2 is electrically small. What is the longest line of sight communication? range between a transmitter of antenna height 350 uh, feet high and receiver antenna 250 feet high so we need to find the distance the longest uh, distance possible the, the equation is 2 root of 2 h1 plus root of 2 h2 where h1 is the height of the transmitter antenna h2 is the height of the receiver antenna simply we have two equations or two values we have 2 into 350 plus root 2 into 25 so if you solve this you will get the value as 33.5 miles distance is the uh, longest distance possible if the antenna height of transmitter is 350 and antenna height of receiver is 25 feet okay so these are the questions which i have included in this video i have tried to include uh, a variety of questions as much as possible Okay, so uh, if you want a part 2 of this video, please do mention in the comment section. We will be including a uh, part 2 with more different questions. Okay, anyway, antenna session is very important if you are going for any exams uh, of, uh, that is competitive exams of electronics. So, if this video was useful for your preparation, please do give it a thumbs up and share this videos uh, with maximum of friends and family uh, who is preparing for any of the competitive examinations related to electronics. And if you like this video, as I said, please do give it a thumbs up. And also, please do subscribe to the channel and tell your friends to subscribe to the channel. Anyway, uh, any information related to your subject or your core subject is not a waste. I hope that I am trying to uh, include maximum of information along with each question as possible. So, uh, as I said, please do subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you want more videos, please keep on watching. And thanks for watching.